Good morning. My name is Dr. Charles Molesby and I am the Interim Department Chair Person and Faculty Member at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about RN to BSN Completion Programs. An RN to BSN Completion Program is intended for those students who are either waiting to take their NCLEX exam or are already working RNs. As healthcare continues to evolve, the need for academic progression by registered nurses is essential. Many, many schools have developed RN to BSN completion programs to help the academic progression need. There are many factors involved with the need for academic progression. Mainly, states are attempting to meet the Institute, Institute of Medicine's recommendation that by the year 2020, 80% of RNs are baccalaureate prepared. In addition, many facilities are looking at magnet status, which, consider, which requires that a high percentage of their RN workforce has a baccalaureate degree, particularly in the areas of management and leadership. Many, if not most, RN to BSN completion programs are either online totally or mostly online with occasional classroom seating times. This allows the working RN flexibility to, to complete a degree while maintaining a full-time job and juggling other responsibilities such as family. In addition, once an RN completes their bachelor's degree, they can consider other areas such as management, hospital education, or public health. So now that we have discussed RN to BSN completion programs, who they're for and why they exist, let's talk about what kind of coursework and other learning experiences a student in this type of program might expect to have. Unlike your pre-licensure programs, uh, your diplomas and your associate degrees, the RN to BSN completion program is not necessarily focused on the learning or improvement of technical skills. This type of program will expect the nurse to develop professional skills in areas such as wellness promotion, ethics and advocacy, research, economics, leadership management, and community nursing. In courses such as wellness promotion, the emphasis will be on student principles of teaching other populations and to provide an overview of the nurse as an educator. In ethics and advocacy, it, the course is what it says it is. It focuses on the responsibility of nurses in all aspects of patient care as it relates to being a patient advocate and the ethics and legalities associated with patient care. Healthcare economics, okay, it's the economics of healthcare. Uh, it talks about various things such as uh, factors that affect the cost of healthcare. In addition, RN to BSN completion students will also re be required to focus on general education knowledge. Courses such as literature, history, and writing may be all required in order to complete the baccalaureate degree. Okay, so the next segment uh, in this video is related to advice. What, what advice would I, as a faculty member, uh, give a student um, planning on going into an RN to BSM program? Well, first, as I mentioned earlier, RN, most RN to BSM programs are online. Um, sometimes students will hear online and they'll automatically think that it's easier than having to be in a seated classroom. Uh, this is actually couldn't be further from the truth. While both a seated classroom and an online environment have their own challenges, an online environment really requires the student to be more focused, um, live by a schedule, and not procrastinate um, in terms of assignments. They think that, well, I can be in the classroom at any time, and that is true. In, in an online environment, you can be in a classroom at 2 p.m. in the afternoon or 2 a.m. in the morning, depending on what works best for your schedule. However, there are deadlines that are met just like in a seated classroom, and if a student is not um, very organized, those deadlines can sneak up on them very quickly, um, and it won't take long before the student in the online environment finds themselves struggling. So if I was a fixing to advise a student and give very specific pieces of advice, the first one would be is, is meet deadlines. Um, get a calendar. We all live by calendars. We work, uh, go to work on calendars. We plan our lives in terms of kids' schedules, those vacations on a calendar, that kind of thing. So 
Do the same thing for your school. Live by a calendar. Now, as you're getting ready to apply to a program, there's a couple things you want to consider. Meet the application deadlines. Uh, many programs have a limited number of spaces, and failure to meet the application deadlines could result in your inability to start in, a, in that RN to BSN completion program this time and during this admission cycle. If you're coming from a diploma program or you graduated a number of years ago, you want to make sure that the courses you took will actually transfer to that college that you're going to. Um, if those courses don't transfer, you may be required to take some additional general education courses. Um, those transfer of courses differ between programs, so you really want to communicate with the advisors in those programs and let them look at all your transcripts. So you've been accepted to a program, so now what do you want to consider? Well, as soon as you receive admission to this program and actually receive access to your courses, you want to review the course handbook or syllabus. Review it, know when your due dates are. As I've already mentioned, live by a calendar. This will help you not to fall behind and will limit forgetfulness that can occur while going to school and working full time or both. Number three, set aside specific time each day. You want to say, okay, from 10 a.m. to noon today, I'm going to spend working on classwork, whether it's writing a paper, reading a chapter, conducting research, whatever it may be, set aside specific time. If you'll do that, you'll find that you're not scrambling trying to find, um, okay, well, I haven't done anything all week, so I have to spend all day doing this. And it'll also maintain your energy throughout the program. And finally, communicate on a regular basis with the instructor. Uh, if you're not clear on what questions are, ask the instructor. Um, the, the drawback to being in an online environment is that the faculty member cannot see response, uh, facial rec or facial expressions by a student in terms of whether they grasp the material or they understand the assignment or anything like that. So it's extremely important that the student in this environment communicate on a regular basis with the faculty member in terms of clarity for assignments or requirements of the course. And in addition, if, if, if you have life issues come up, let your faculty member know. Uh, you may have a deadline that's fast approaching and you've got a family member that's in the hospital or you yourself have been sick. If you communicate in advance with your faculty member, they may be more likely to an extended deadline. So those are the, the tips and the advice that I would give a student looking into, the, in, into these types of programs. Uh, I hope you found these tips and advice helpful and wish you the best of luck on your educational journey.